Hi everyone, welcome back to our devotion time. So today is January 10th and our devotion is called The Fear Factor. It's out of Psalm 56, verse 3 and 4, New Living Translation. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? You will notice David did not hesitate to admit when he was afraid. King Saul was pursuing him, and so great was his terror that he ran to the enemy's camp, an unlikely place to find refuge. It was bold and risky, but perhaps King Akish would not recognize him or might consider him a deserter and an asset. Unfortunately, David was found out, reported to the king, and, motivated by fear, acted like a madman and was sent away. Fear causes us to do things we normally would not. It wasn't long before David readjusted his thinking and put his trust once again in God. It is interesting that he says, when I am afraid, not if I am afraid. Fear is a human response, and unless counteracted by trust, is at best destructive. What are you afraid of today? Are you magnifying a concern into an impossible mountain of what-ifs? Trust Jesus. Remember his promises to you. No matter the outcome, he is in charge. Boy, um... I prayed before I read this today and said, Lord, teach me. And yes, I have so many things in my life that I might not equate to fear. And then the Holy Spirit will remind me or will cause me to see it and realize that I'm actually walking in fear. You know, the acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. And that is is a very true statement. We, be, we are believing in false evidence that appears to be real. And isn't that almost the same thing as walking in faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So these words are verbs. They are active words. They are words where they cause an action and a reaction in us. They cause us to sometimes, you know, fear causes us to react instead of causing us to respond. Many times we react to a situation in fear because of, like they said here, we've built up something into a mountain of what ifs, and it's really just a small molehill. <laughs> and, you know, the enemy will bring that fear on us, and we need to turn around back to God, back to faith, and realize that our God is in charge, that our God is in control, that he has not left the throne, that he has not lost control of our lives or our situation, but that it's us focusing on this fear, this false evidence appearing real, instead of focusing on his wonderful grace, on his supernatural power, on his love, his compassion for you as his child. You know, I am so guilty of this, sisters. I mean that. And so I speak from a very humble heart right now that is receiving the very words I'm speaking because I need them too. And I want us to all come together in agreement that we will realize we weren't given a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Let's come into agreement that our God is in charge of our situation, that he hasn't lost control, that he hasn't stepped off the throne and given control to the enemy. And that the enemy does not have the last say in our lives as children of the king. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we're afraid today. But like David, we're going to trust in you. We don't have to worry about anything. Because we know that whatever you allow in our lives is designed for our good. And we rest in that knowledge, Lord. We praise you and thank you that we can rest in your mighty hand that you are in control of our circumstances. And that even if we don't see the answer yet, that does not mean that you are not actively working behind the scenes on our behalf. And we give you praise and glory for that. 
We thank you for the peace that passes all understanding, that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord today. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me again. And I will see you all tomorrow. I love you very, very much. God bless. Bye.